Couple discovers buried car in their backyard, and one day later the husband leaves. Nathan and Emily had spent decades together, their life in the quaint house they called home seemingly perfect. The routine was peaceful, the garden flourishing under Emily's care. But one fateful morning, everything changed. Emily walked into their backyard to tend to her newly planted flowers. As she moved between the plants, something unusual caught her eye, a metallic glint beneath the soil. It looked out of place. Kneeling down, she brushed away some dirt, revealing a small section of rust-covered metal. Her curiosity peaked. She grabbed a hand trowel from her gardening tools and began digging. The more Emily dug, the more perplexing it became. Beneath the dirt lay the unmistakable shape of a vehicle, a car completely buried under layers of earth. Nathan, she called, her voice trembling slightly. Her husband, who was working inside, rushed out to see what had alarmed her. When he laid eyes on the car partially unearthed in their backyard, his face mirrored Emily's confusion. What is this? How did a car end up buried here? Nathan asked, his brow furrowing in disbelief. Together, they spent the morning digging out the rest of the car. The rusty exterior told them it had been buried for years, maybe even decades. As they cleared more of the dirt, a sense of unease grew between them. Who buried this, and why? The car was fully uncovered by noon, but their questions only multiplied. Neither of them had any explanation for how the vehicle ended up beneath their garden. The unease from before had turned into a creeping sense of dread. The next morning, Emily awoke to find the house unusually quiet. Nathan's side of the bed was empty. In the kitchen, a short farewell letter was waiting for her on the table. Her hands trembled as she unfolded the paper. Nathan's handwriting was shaky, but unmistakable. Emily, I can't stay any longer. Please don't look for me. Leave the car buried. Trust me. The words seemed to leap off the page, sending a shiver down her spine. As the meaning of his message sunk in, tears welled up in Emily's eyes. Her hands shook as she clutched the note to her chest. What secret was Nathan hiding? Why had the car's discovery driven him to leave so abruptly? And most disturbingly, what was it about the buried car that compelled him to say leave the car buried? Emily, now alone, was left with an unsolved mystery. One that could either remain hidden in the earth or be uncovered, no matter the consequences. Emily sat at the kitchen table, her tear-streaked face blank with shock. Nathan was gone, and the note left a trail of questions far darker than she ever anticipated. What could have driven him to leave after all these years? And what was it about the car that made him flee so suddenly? She stared out the window at the garden, where the rust-covered vehicle lay half-buried in the dirt like a tombstone for forgotten secrets. Emily knew she should have felt anger or even betrayal, but instead, there was only fear, fear of what she didn't know. Yet, despite Nathan's ominous warning, she couldn't shake the feeling that the answer lay buried with the car. The next few days passed in a blur of sleepless nights and anxious thoughts. She tried to keep herself busy, but no amount of gardening or reading could pull her mind away from the car in her backyard. Finally, on the fourth night of Nathan's absence, Emily made a decision. If she was ever going to find out what drove her husband away, she needed to confront the truth head-on. The following morning, Emily returned to the garden. With her shovel in hand, she approached the car once more. Nathan had told her to leave it buried, but why, she had to know. She began digging again, this time with determination, her hands moving through the soil faster than before. As the hours passed, she uncovered more of the car, brushing away years of dirt and decay. The car appeared to be an old sedan, a model from the 1970s. The license plate was still attached, though it was so rusted and worn that the numbers were almost unreadable. Almost. Emily squinted at the plate, her heart racing as she tried to make out the faded digits. Then it hit her, the numbers were hauntingly familiar. It wasn't just a random vehicle, it was a car from her past. Memories she hadn't thought about in years rushed back to her, like flickering scenes from an old movie. She was young again, maybe in her early 20s, driving on a dark highway late at night. Nathan had been with her back then too. They'd been dating, just starting out, 
and there had been an accident. A collision, though nothing major, or so she'd thought at the time. But now, those memories felt distorted, incomplete. Something else had happened that night. Something she had long forgotten, or perhaps buried deep within herself, just like the car. The realization sent a chill down her spine. Emily stumbled back from the car, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She had to know the truth. Rushing inside, she went to the attic and rummaged through old photo albums, looking for any trace of that night. But there were no photos, only vague memories, and the sense that she had overlooked something important all those years ago. Later that evening, as she paced around the house, her phone buzzed. It was an unknown number, but she answered it anyway, her heart still racing. Emily, the voice on the other end was calm, almost to calm. Who is this? She asked, her voice trembling. It's Nathan. I'm sorry for leaving the way I did. I had to. But you shouldn't have dug any further. Nathan, what's going on? What happened with the car? Why did you leave? Her words came out in a rush, her confusion turning into desperation. There was a long silence on the other end of the line. Then Nathan spoke again, his voice low and grave. Emily, do you remember the night of the accident? We were on Route 57, driving home after the party. There was a storm, Emily's heart sank. The accident, the storm, she did remember. But she had pushed those memories so far back, she'd nearly forgotten. Yes, but we were fine, we weren't hurt. Just a fender bender, right? Nathan's sigh was deep and heavy. No, Emily, it wasn't just a fender bender. We hit someone, a man. He came out of nowhere in the rain. We tried to help him, but he didn't make it, and we panicked. Emily felt the room spinning around her. No, that's not possible. We would have. We would have called the police. We would have. We didn't, Emily. We buried him. And we buried the car. That's why I had to leave. I can't live with it anymore. Tears streamed down Emily's face as the weight of the revelation crushed her. Her mind reeled, trying to reconcile the man she had loved for decades with the horrific truth Nathan had just told her. What do we do now? She whispered, barely able to speak through her sobs. Nathan's voice was cold, distant. You have to leave the car buried, Emily, and you have to forget. Like we did before, if anyone finds out, it will destroy both of us. The call disconnected, leaving Emily standing alone in the dimly lit kitchen, her phone clutched in her trembling hand. She looked out the window again, at the car now fully unearthed in the garden. The truth had been buried for decades, but now it had surfaced and there was no going back. Emily knew one thing for certain, no secret stays buried forever. Emily stood frozen in the kitchen, her mind spinning, trying to piece together the shattered fragments of the life she thought she knew. Nathan's confession echoed in her mind. They had buried someone buried a life along with the car that now sat exposed in their backyard. All these years, she had unknowingly been living on top of this secret. She glanced out the window again, staring at the car. The outline of the vehicle seemed almost sinister now, as if it were waiting for her to make a choice. Should she leave it buried? as Nathan had begged her to do, or was it already too late for that? Emily spent the night sleepless, unable to shake the weight of the truth that had resurfaced. Each time she closed her eyes, she saw flashes of that rainy night, the flash of headlights, the screech of tires, and the horrifying thud of something they had hit. She had forgotten, or perhaps she had forced herself to forget. But now, every detail was returning to her, sharper than ever. By morning, Emily knew she couldn't just ignore it. She couldn't live with the lie anymore, but what could she do? If she went to the police, her entire life would unravel and Nathan would never forgive her. But if she stayed silent, the guilt would consume her. With trembling hands, Emily picked up the phone and dialed Nathan's number, but it went straight to voicemail. Nathan, please, call me back, we have to talk. I don't know what to do. I need you here, she said, her voice cracking. She hung up, feeling more alone than ever. Hours passed and still no word from Nathan. By afternoon, Emily's desperation led her to take a drastic step. She needed help, someone to confide in. There was only one person who came to mind, 
her older sister, Claire. Claire had always been the strong one, the one who could think clearly even in the worst of situations. Emily hesitated, unsure if she could drag her sister into this nightmare. But in the end, she dialed Claire's number. Em, everything okay? Claire's familiar voice felt like a lifeline. I know. Everything's not okay, Emily said, choking back tears. Something happened, and I don't know what to do. Take a deep breath, okay? Tell me what's going on. Emily hesitated, but then the floodgates opened. She told Claire everything the discovery of the car, Nathan's sudden departure, and the horrifying truth about the man they had hit that night so long ago. By the time she finished, there was silence on the other end of the line. Oh my God, M. Claire finally whispered. This is serious. You need to go to the police. I can't, Emily said, her voice shaking. Nathan, he said we'd lose everything if I did. He's already gone. I can't lose him completely. Claire's voice was firm. Emily, you can't keep this buried forever. If someone finds out, it'll be so much worse. I know it's terrifying, but you have to do the right thing. Otherwise, you'll never be free of this. Emily nodded, even though Claire couldn't see her. The truth of her sister's words was undeniable, but the fear of losing everything held her back. After a long conversation, Claire promised to come over the next day to support her, no matter what decision she made. That night, sleep continued to evade Emily. Every creak of the house sounded like an omen. Every shadow seemed to carry the weight of the secret she and Nathan had buried. At one point, she thought she saw movement outside the window near the car, but when she rushed to check, no one was there. Her paranoia was growing, and it was eating her alive. The next morning, Claire arrived at the house as promised. She embraced Emily tightly, her eyes filled with concern. Have you heard from Nathan? Claire asked softly. Emily shook her head. No, nothing. I'm scared, Claire. I don't know where he is. Maybe he's just giving himself some space to process everything, Claire said, trying to sound reassuring. But even she knew that the longer Nathan stayed away, the worse it looked. The two sisters sat at the kitchen table, the silence between them heavy with uncertainty. Finally, Claire broke the stillness. I think we should at least call a lawyer. We don't have to go to the police right away, but you need advice from someone who knows what they're doing. If there's any chance to protect yourself and Nathan, they'll know. Emily nodded slowly. You're right. I don't know how to handle this. Later that afternoon, Claire made the call to a trusted lawyer, a friend of hers, who could meet them discreetly. The appointment was set for the next day, and though Emily felt a flicker of relief, the dread still loomed large. That evening, as Emily was making tea in the kitchen, she glanced out the window again, expecting to see the same eerie scene of the half-buried car. But her heart nearly stopped. Someone was in the garden. A figure stood near the car, partially obscured by the fading light. Panic surged through her. Was it Nathan? Had he come back? But as she squinted through the window, she realized it wasn't him. The person was taller, broader, and they weren't just standing there. They were digging, digging frantically around the car. Emily gasped, dropping the mug she had been holding. The sound of shattering porcelain echoed through the kitchen, but the figure outside didn't seem to notice. Whoever it was, they were to focus on the car, on uncovering whatever secrets still lay buried beneath the soil. Her pulse raced. Who could it be, and what were they looking for? Without thinking, Emily grabbed her phone and rushed to the front door. She could feel the adrenaline surging through her veins as she dialed Claire's number with trembling fingers. Claire, someone's in the garden. They're digging up the car. Emily whispered urgently, dot, dot. What? I'm on my way. Claire said, her voice sharp with alarm. Emily hung up and hesitated by the front door, unsure of what to do next. Should she confront the stranger, call the police? Before she could make a decision, the back door creaked open. The sound sent a wave of terror through her. The person was coming inside. 